Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Box Office Talk. This is the show where I break down what happened at the box office, see if my predictions for the top five are correct, then make predictions for next week's top five. So let's get right on into it. Last week I predicted that number one would be Argyle, number two would be The Chosen, season four, episodes one through three, number three would be The Beekeeper, number four would be Mean Girls, and number five would be Wonka. And I only got three out of five of my predictions right for this week, and what I thought would be maybe an easier thing to predict Actually, a movie dropped out of here and another movie kind of took its place. So uh, a lot of you also kind of made the same mistake. So we are all in the same boat here, <laughs> the same sinking prediction boat. <laughs> so let's go over what happened in the overall top 10. Number one, here we go. <laughs> uh, th this is maybe like the first big kind of flop or what's deemed as kind of like the big flop of the year so far. We'll talk about it. Um, it's Argyle, new Matthew Vaughn film uh, released by Universal. And it's a co-production between that and Apple, I believe. And, and of course, Marv, uh, which is Matthew Bond's production company. This weekend, it made $18 million. Now, for a spy movie that technically is not based on an existing IP, I know people will be like, yeah, but there's a book at Barnes & Noble called Argyle, and it says it's inspired, you know, the movie's inspired by that. It's like, no, <laughs> the, the movie came first. The movie idea came before. It's, it's all a gag, right? You know? Um, but so, so as far as like an original spy thing, it's like, well, yeah, you know, you got to take certain things with a we're not really sure how much this thing costs. That's the biggest thing we're looking at. Now, for the longest time, people were spreading the news that, hey, this is another Apple production where they've dumped 200 million into this to produce. And it seemed plausible because Killers of the Flower Moon cost 200 million, Napoleon cost 200 million, those are also Apple movies. But this movie, what, what the actual story was, was that it cost 200 million for Apple to get the rights to it, to, to you know, be able to release it, to acquire the film, if you will, not necessarily to produce it. So it could be 200 million we can't rule that out but as far as far as that being the official number not really so it could be a little lower maybe it could be around the budget of Kingsman the Golden Circle which I believe was at least under 200 million dollars but either way with a worldwide total only getting it up to 35 million it's still not looking very good maybe the budget isn't 200 million but this is you know there is some money poured into this you know you got a lot of names in this cast that, that normally maybe people would be interested in seeing i don't know if it's a marketing thing or whatever but it's you know, I, I thought for sure also that the marketing would be a push for it because people were genuinely speculating who the identity of Agent Argyle was. Um, people, a lot of people thought it was going to be the fucking cat. <laughs> a lot of people also thought that Taylor Swift wrote the book. This was back before people kind of really realized, you know, uh, that the, the, the book came after the movie, you know, it's, it's not, <laughs> Ellie Conway's not real, you know, they, they are in the sense that another author or two, uh, wrote, wrote the book, but it's, it's not a real person. Some people thought it was Taylor Swift, so I thought maybe that speculation would get Swifties into the theater just to see, see if that is the case, see if there was any hints, but yeah, that just, it seemed like anything they really tried to do to get this movie out there didn't really work or it didn't really go all the way to keep people talking about it and then going to see the film. Maybe people saw the Apple Productions logo and, and assumed, well, it'll be on there at, you know, at some point so I can just wait for it. I don't know. I, I, I think Apple has done a pretty solid thing as far as like, you know, putting some of their streaming, you know, meant for streaming movies in the theaters. And I think they've done a pretty good job as far as like Killers of the Flower Moon and Napoleon, you know, they feel like real movies. They don't feel like just content, whether you, you know, like them or not, I think there is kind of a clear difference between, like, a director really wanted to make this, they're passionate about it, versus a director, you know, is doing a job, you know, a streaming job, you know, and, and I feel like at least the last two times they did it, you know, it was like, they, they the movies did pretty okay, all things considered, you know what I mean, um, but at least they got it out there, got word of mouth to spread, and Killers of the Flower Moon is now able to be enjoyed on Apple+. Plus. Argyle, it seems like that's not really the case, they don't really have that strong strong kind of attraction there. So that's pretty interesting. Let's go over some stats for the uh, opening weekend as far as Matthew Vaughn's other films. It is 18 million above Layer Cakes, 13 million over Kingsman, and 9 million over Stardust, but it is below some of his other films like Kick-Ass by 1 million, Kingsman 1 by 18 million, Kingsman 2 by 21 million, and First Class, X-Men First Class by 37 million. So you can technically say this is in the top five highest opening weekends for Matthew Vaughn, but the filmography is a little limited. It's kind of more so in the middle when you lay it all out. Um, as far as his other films, it has already outgrossed Layer Cake by 16 million. Now needs 19 million until it outgrosses King's Man. So starting out at the bottom, you know, not doing great. You know, uh, the fact that you can't like already outgross the, I, I want to say technically COVID, you know, 
uh, affected movie, but it, it, it was, I think, mostly just a Spider-Man thing. It came out literally days, similar to Matrix 4, it came out days after Spider-Man No Way Home. It was like, that's not very smart, is it? <laughs> uh, for the worldwide numbers, it is 24 million over Layer Cake. It needs 67 million until it outgrows his kick ass. So, you know, it's not immediately King's Man for for worldwide. So there you go. We'll we'll see we'll see how this goes. It, maybe it'll have crazy word of mouth. But since we're kind of past January, next week next week Lisa Frankenstein might upend things. I don't think it'll be too big of a thing. Madam Web though, and then just going forward from that, yeah, we we might have some trouble for Argyle. Who knows? I don't know, you know, let's move on to number two, though, which is The Chosen Season 4, Episodes 1 through 3, The Fathom Event. Uh, I, I thought for sure, because the numbers had been pretty low these past couple weekends, and because The Chosen, the last time they did a Fathom Event, it did pretty well, so here we go, once again, I, I got my prediction right here, for for this at least. Made 6.03 million this weekend, which adds to a domestic total of 7.4. They opened up a little early, hence why we have a domestic total in addition to the weekend. Um, don't know what the budget of it is. It, it, it would basically just be counting the budget for three episodes, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> so, I, either way, you know, getting a TV show show out theatrically and making any kind of money back from that is pretty solid, I'm assuming, you know, the fact that they're a number two when normally, you know, back in the day, at least, Fathom Events wouldn't really make it this high, so, you know, good on them, you know, they're making their money. Let's move on to number three, though, still making their money, The Beekeeper, making five million, adding to a domestic total of 49 million. It is still 36 million behind Fury, and then worldwide it is sitting at 109 million dollars. So they've crossed over the 100 million mark. It needs 101 million until it outgrows this Fury. If they haven't made a profit at this point, crossing over 100 million and still kind of climbing, then I, I don't know what else to say, you know what I mean? I can't imagine this movie costs too, too much more because I still don't really have a budget in front of me, but I'm, I, I, I think it's safe to say at this point they've got a pretty solid hit here and we, we maybe can expect news on Beekeeper 2 at any point. That's all I want. I just want an announcement that it's doing well and that we're getting Beekeeper 2. If, if, it's, if, if we never get Beekeeper 2, then how can we know for sure this movie was a hit or not? <laughs> I mean, if, if Argyle can allegedly cost 200 million for a while, <laughs> then, 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 you know, who knows with the beekeeper. Let's move on to number four, which is Wonka, making 4.7 million, adding to a domestic total of 201 million. It is still 5 million behind the Johnny Depp Wonka film. Any fucking day. I think next week, next week, for sure, I think. And if it's not, then the week after. At this point, we're in the slow crawl to being the highest grossing Wonka film. But uh, anyways, it's already done that worldwide, so it doesn't really matter. But domestically, uh, speaking of worldwide, it is sitting at 571 million. So it's 29 million away from getting to 600 million uh, worldwide, which is pretty damn impressive. If it gets to 625 million, then at that point it would uh, make five times its $125 million budget. And I'm not sure if it has the legs for that, but if it can domestically and worldwide get over 600 million, I think that's a pretty solid mile. I mean, it's already crossed so many other milestones. Um, so the <laughs> it, this is just the, the cherry on top. It's doing really well. Number five, Migration, not Mean Girls, Migration, sneaking back in here. This is why I don't want to rule out Argyle just yet. <laughs> and I know this sounds ridiculous and it probably, it's not the same thing. But, you know, Migration, when that came out, it was kind of like, maybe the holiday season can boost it up, but man, you know, it just seems dead on arrival. No one's really talking about it. And then it went on to make this amount of money. It made 4.1 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of 106 million. It is still 1 million behind Hop, but at this point next weekend, it's gonna cross over. So congrats on outgrossing Hop. A week Week before you do. <laughs> Worldwide, it is sitting at $221 million. So, with it crossing over the 216 margin, it has tripled its $72 million initial production budget. So, hats off to you guys. If it gets to $288 million at this point, it'll make four times if I have the numbers right there. But yeah, you know, it's made three times its budget, so it's not gonna, it's it's still 130 million behind the Lorax. It will not be one of Illumination's highest grossing films, but this is a pretty solid hit for a movie that isn't based on anything and for a movie that people were kind of writing off. You know, word of mouth kind of spread, at least for the family, for families out there, family audience members, so that, that's, that's gotta be good for them, you know what I mean? So I don't want to rule out Argyle just because of the success of one Illumination film. <laughs> 
I guess. Anyways, let's move on to number six, which is Mean Girls making 4.0 million, adding to a domestic total of 66 million. Still behind the original film, now by 20 million dollars worldwide. It is sitting at 92 million. So, uh, as we kind of talked about recently, it needs 108 million now to triple its initial production budget of 36 million. So it needs 16 million to get there, and maybe it'll have the legs to do so. I think it'll probably be a slow crawl at this point. But either way, they're about to get to 100 million worldwide, which I think is probably worth celebrating for that team alone. Um, for the original worldwide, it needs 38 million, but maybe that'll also be a slow crawl to get there. <laughs> Either way, it, it's doing fine, but, you know, it dropping out of the top five on such a kind of, you know, uh, small weekend for, for, for the box office, you know, a low grossing weekend for the box office, that's a little surprising, I would say, that Migration was able, able to overtake it this easily. I think maybe that just says, a lot about the movie's quality or the word of mouth at the very least audience's reception to that versus migrations kind of pull for families. Number seven is Anyone But You making 3.5 million, adding to a domestic total of 76 million, needs 9 million until it outgrosses Will Gluck's Annie. Worldwide, it is sitting at $151 million. It has really, <laughs> really gone up. It's at $150 million worldwide over that point. Over that margin is pretty great, you know? Um, if it gets to $200 million, that's amazing, you know, and we'll see. We'll talk a little bit more about that for the predictions for next week. It has now made 12 million over Annie, 5 million over Friends with Benefits, and 1 million over Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, for Will Gluck, and now needs a 195 million worldwide until it outgrosses Peter Rabbit 1. So probably not, they probably won't get that much, but this is technically Will Gluck's second highest grossing film, so worldwide. So there you go, you know, that's that's got to feel pretty good for him, especially making a pretty low budget rom-com and making so much money back on that. Number eight, we have American Fiction making 2.3 million, adding to a domestic total of 15.01 million. Uh, still don't know what the budget of this thing is, and I'm not sure if this is enough to say it doubled whatever budget it could have had, unless they really did shoot this uh, with a pretty low budget, I'm not sure. But hey, you know, people are seeing it getting the word out uh, before the big award season you know, comes to a close with the Oscar ceremony in March. Um, and then continuing that, number nine, Poor Things. This movie is actually kind of having better luck than American fiction. Making 2.1 million, adding to a domestic total of 28 million. It is still behind the favorite by 6 million for Yorgos Lanthimos, but noticeably enough, worldwide, it is now sitting at 68 million dollars. A little bit of a bump from when we last saw this last weekend. It's now sitting 27 million behind the favorite, but more importantly, it is 2 million away from doubling its initial production budget of 35 million. So what kind of looked at, at least for me, as a movie that might put some people off, maybe word of mouth will be, oh, you can't see that. That's outrageous. You know, Bo is afraid, basically. Instead, because of the awards consideration, I guess, and just word of mouth of people really connecting with this one more than other films, it's, it's, it's close to doubling its budget and, you know, kind of making a profit. If, if it can triple it also, that would be great too. But for right now, doubling it is good enough. So there you go, you know, poor things really out there. And then number 10, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, which a lot of people kind of say the same exact thing, but instead, poor things is more positive. And this is like, oh, look, it's really out there. <laughs> I made 2.01 million, adding to a domestic total of 120 million. It is behind Shazam by 20 million now for the dead DCEU. For James Wan's domestic filmography, uh, it needs 17 million until it outgrosses The Conjuring, First Conjuring. Worldwide, it is sitting at 423 million, so it's now 232 million behind Justice League for the dead DCEU. And then for James Wan, the next film it needs to outgross in his filmography worldwide is Aquaman. It needs 711 million to do so. It's not going to do that. Um... So this is it, you know, this is this this is the death of the the DCEU right here with Aquaman officially leaving. You know, from now on we will only <laughs> refer to the to the to the DCU, you know, with uh, Superman Legacy coming out next year, the first uh film released in theaters. So there you go. This is it. Thanks DCEU. It's been a been a hell of a run. <laughs> Now it's time for the fun part, the predictions for next week's top five. Number one, I think, will be Lisa Frankenstein. But number two, I think, will be anyone but you. I think it'll have a little bit of a rebound because they just announced they're doing the Encore re-release with more bonus material. So I think it might have a chance, especially Valentine's Day right around the corner. I think anyone but you could sneak back in here. Then number three, I think, will be Argyle. Number four, The Chosen. Season four, episodes one through three. And then number five, The Beekeeper. But what are your predictions for next week's top five? Leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.